I'm going to 100% Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's DLC. This means I'll need to win every DLC cup with perfect scores for all classes. Also, every staff ghost must be beaten, including the 200cc time trials. First of all, I can't believe they added 8 new characters, including 9 colors for Birdo. She's gonna get most of the screen time for the Golden Dash Cup, starting with Paris Promenade from Mario Kart Tour. Ah, oh, the accordion musette is the perfect instrument to make anyone feel like they're in the city of love. The local toads and Yoshis are so friendly. They got the best ice cream. And who can forget the lovely piranha plant scaring the tourists? You frighten locals and scare tourists away! Toad Circuit? Nintendo has over 100 courses from 9 titles? And they put Toad Circuit in the first DLC pack? It's a good thing they followed it up with a different flavor, that being Choco Mountain. It's amazing how much life a remake can add to the aesthetics of a single track. The original you were just puddling your way through chocolate dirt with white skies. And now you can see the details in the wood, the tunnel, and the boulders splashing into the water. But the coolest part is what happens right after you finish the third lap of Choco Mountain. It's so brilliant. I'll let you see it for yourself. You just got coconut mauled. Share this with all your friends to totally coconut maul them. And that's the first perfect gold trophy of the video. I gotta be honest. I missed the Mario Kart Wii era, so I don't totally understand that meme. I do like the Shy Guys flexing their hydraulic cars. That wrapped up mirror mode as well, then I remembered to use my brakes right away while drifting in 200cc to safely slide past those long turns, and to avoid falling off the dangerous cliff sides. Up next were the time trials for that cup's courses. And just like I did with the base game, I'm not going to cover the 150 staff ghosts until they step it up in difficulty. It's the 200cc time trials that we all want to see, thus I swapped to my bread and butter Mr. Scooty bike and roller tires. Learned the shortcuts of Paris, then still lost. Juiced from Nintendo was kicking my butt. I couldn't believe how hard the first 200 ghost was. She didn't even use the optimal path on the first lap. How is she passing me when I'm clearly drifting better? Wait, maybe I'm not doing this right. I've always had the belief that holding out your drift for the best possible mini turbo boost was a necessity. Turns out, it's not. I realized that for whatever reason on this course on 200cc, that using the first mini turbo boost rapidly one after another was giving me more speed than the fully charged version. I am questioning my whole life right now. How does that make any sense? Oh, and you don't need a mushroom for these shortcuts. Use it to cut through the piranha cardboard instead. Once I figured those things out, juiced from Nintendo was no longer a challenge. It was really that simple. Then guess what happened on Toad Circuit? I executed the single drift boost just like I did in Paris, and now I'm falling behind. What the heck? Why are these things never clear? Well, let's try not using it right away. <sighs> I don't know what's going on. I ain't no Mario Kart expert. Apparently doing the drifting longer on Toad's vanilla circuit is better. Whatever, I'll just take the win. Thankfully, Choco Mountain's ghost doesn't require any special techniques to beat. Just had to remember to use the dash mushroom over the terrain near the end. <laughs> PD Piranha, please do not make that atrocious noise ever again. I'll let you do the coconut mall race. It's not that hard. The winning philosophy here is not to try too hard. Don't do the jumps. Play it safe instead and drift early. That's it. Golden Dash trials completed. On to the Lucky Cat Cup. It seems we're continuing the theme of starting with a city from the tour game, Tokyo Blur. I selected Wiggler as my racer, and man, just looking at him is making my back hurt. Never mind the constant arching over. What about his hands? He's driving with two of them and has two to spare. This caterpillar should be dragging a banana behind him and hanging onto shells with the others. Heck, the other characters drive with one hand. Wiggler should be holding three. When struck by the... Wiggler shows his red angry color. Anyways, let's go to Shroom Ridge. I don't have anything to say about this course, other than it looks a whole lot like Toad Turnpike except it's daytime in this one. The third track is Sky Garden, and I'm going to continue my slander here. This just looks like a simplified version of Cloud Top Cruise. Feel free to rip me apart in the comments. However, the cup ends with a banger, that being Ninja Hideaway. This is such a great level, but unfortunately my most notable memory of this course is when I got to the Mario Mario Dojo Finals at Nintendo Live, where we raced on Ninja Hideaway on 200cc, and I finished third place, failing to take home the gold. But for now, I want to be Ninja. I want to be Ninja.
Ninja! I love all the different routes and areas you can explore in this hideout. Best track by far in this Grand Prix. Although I did get a little confused and thrown off a couple times during mirror mode, causing me to second guess which way to drift. During 200cc, I was blinded towards the end, but I was one with the force and the force was with me, resulting in perfect scores for all the classes. It's Staff Ghost time, so I'm hoping Kamek will bring the magic with him. Tokyo Blur actually wasn't too bad and was nothing special. It took a few tries to get familiar with the course and not have any hiccups with the turns and jumps. Nonetheless, easy win. Now the time trial for Shroom Ridge was interesting because it wasn't the ghost that was difficult. It was the hazards of the stage that made it crazy to maneuver around at the high speeds of 200 CC. I kept playing until I had no collisions on an attempt, which put me five seconds ahead of the Nintendo staff member. Sky Garden was similar to Shroom Ridge, except instead of hazards being the hurdle, it was the shortcuts. Both the ones at the beginning and the end could slow you down if not done right. 20 minutes of practice later, I bounced the top of the leaves non-stop and didn't use the mushroom until after entering the beanstalk arch. The funny thing about all four of these 200 time trial courses was they felt frustrating at first. Then over time, I discovered that it was really just one or two obstacles at most that I needed to overcome. Ninja Hideaway was no different with this stupid layer of wood I kept running into. How is the ghost not doing the same without compromising speed? Curious, I watched from their perspective and found not one, but two shortcuts. I was already close to beating them, so all I had to do was take the first alternative route for all three laps, and I didn't even need the second one. Watching the ghost is the very definition of work smarter, not harder. Before starting the turnip cup, I have to change my character to Toadette. No, I did not misspeak. That is a powered up version of Toadette, not Peach. Once upon a time, Toadette was jealous of Princess Toadstool, so she stuffed some estrogen she got from the black market into this super crown, transforming her into Peachette. What the flip, Nintendo? I'm just an innocent man trying to play Mario Kart in New York. We're just innocent, man. <laughs> What's next? Bowsette? Wapich? Oh, wait. That one's actually real. Anywho, I've been to New York City before, and there is something very unrealistic about this track. Where are the homeless people? Is that Goomba supposed to be homeless? Jeez, can a lady ever feel safe in the city? I'm staying on top of the bus. Now, for better or worse, the recording here is glitching like crazy, as you can see with the horrendous frame rate. Stop pointing fingers. You're a problem. You're a real, real problem. I'm pretty sure Peachette's presence was what gave me these tech issues, so I'm done using her. That way I can actually show you the courses and play as Diddy Kong in mirror mode, baby! This rad little dude should have been in Mario Kart 8 since the beginning instead of those rip-off skins. Unfortunately, Peachette ruined so badly the gameplay I recorded that I lost all footage for the upcoming next four cups. So please bear with me trying to recreate these moments in verse mode. By the way, I'm racing on another Mario circuit. Another one. Another one. Another one. And another one. Calamari Desert? Now that's more like it. I remember as kids, we'd always want to see what was inside the tunnel where the train would go in and out of. Well, in the booster course pass, the developers shook things up with the second and third laps to include a tunnel section. I wonder if they knew that's what we always wanted. Sadly, after mirror mode, I had to retire playing as Diddy for now. I'll be back to play him more for sure, but I'm also excited to try out Funky Kong. I somehow never owned Mario Kart Wii, so I missed out on his flame bike era of dominance. Well, what better way than 200cc? to get a taste of what it was like. The turnip cup ended with Waluigi Pinball, a bright and colorful course to try out the funkiest character of them all. At first, I wasn't the biggest fan of how his flame bike controlled. Then I remembered I'm going blazing fast on 200cc. I needed to pull the brake on these turns. By lap three of this cup's final track, I became a believer of the Funky Kong supremacy. Dude is so tough, his foot doesn't burn when dragging on the ground to course correct turns. And his trick scream, cowabunga! Having achieved three stars in each class, it was on to the time trials. Now since Peachette tore to pieces all of my attempts, we're stuck with my ghost replays. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! And you may be asking yourself, why the heck are you playing as Donkey Kong right now? For whatever reason, I decided to copy the Nintendo staff selection for this track. And guess what? It worked! Beating the 150 ghosts was that simple. I did the same with the New York's 200 time trial. It's a bummer I can't show you the moments where I made mistakes. Please like and subscribe to show your support in spite of what Peachette has done to the video. I do remember this course taking a while to perfect. 
I essentially just copied the same route the Nintendo Ghost took, except I didn't use a mushroom on the second lap like they did, and deployed it at a random part instead for no particular reason. The rest after that went identical to the Ghost's chosen path, which proved to be a winning formula. Mario Kart Circuit 3? I beat the first try because I took a more advantageous shortcut, rather than the obvious gap the staff took. Oh, I haven't been changing my character either. Yoshi in the sports coupe was gelling with me, so I didn't mess with it. I continued with it in Calamari Desert, a road that became a lot less challenging to navigate properly once I figured out the shortcuts. The only other hardship to look out for was drifting around the train flawlessly. Third lap, I blasted off the alternative ramp, leading to my victory. Waluigi Pinball wasn't bad either. Just had to break drift through the windy roads leading up to the pinball section, where I would then expend my mushroom. Here's my proof of winning. Now let's move on to the propeller cup featuring Pauline beginning down under at Sydney Sprint. There's the Sydney Opera House. We go inside it, we exit it, and I don't know what else to say. I hear so many wonderful things about Australia, but this course ain't anything special. If you listen closely though, you can hear Pauline sing when she flies. In fact, did you know Pauline is in the heavyweight class? How did the game determine that? With We Fit? That's obese. Anyways, this is Snowland. It has to be made of vanilla ice cream because this is bland. Mushroom Gorge, on the other hand, has mushrooms. Bouncy mushrooms. In the cave, if you can get to the blue one standing in the middle, it will proc the glider, which will then prompt Pauline to sing again. After attaining the trophy for 150cc, I had used all of the characters introduced in the DLC. But wait, you may ask, what about the Miis? Ugh, fine. I'll use the guest Miis to highlight the costume starting with this brickhead. Anywho, Sky High Sunday is a spectacle to look at. I do have to say, most of the track is pretty skinny and I thought it would be more chaotic with 12 racers. However, I didn't experience that feeling because everyone's carts are set to anti-gravity the whole course, so any collision into each other just sparked a boost. In the 200cc class, I flexed the Dry Bowser Mii suit as I curved around the final home stretch of the Propeller Cup and took home the gold. It was back to the sports coupe for me as I entered the time trials to show off more Mii suits, but the ones featured in the 150 races won't get as much of a spot light as those that compete in 200cc. And man do I wish I had the fail footage that Peachette deleted, because this course got under my nerves. Lap 2 was when disaster would always strike. This horrendous park section made me want to curse up a storm. Just look at how many hazards you can run into and what could go wrong. And pretty much everything that could did go wrong at least once. Not to mention I had to nail that shortcut. Thankfully, the ghost wasn't perfect, so I was allowed a couple mistakes like that mushroom I used to get out of the grass there. The last one I cut across had a narrow gap. Fortunately, lap three was much more of a smooth ride, and I was glad when it was over. For Snowland, I fittingly dressed as ice cream, then not so fittingly as PD Piranha. I'm pretty sure I won this on my first or second try, all thanks to the ghost not being that challenging. They even used a shortcut that wasn't the one placed at the end, but honestly, I can't even remember where it was, and it didn't matter, because I one without it anyways. Mushroom Gorge took some practice. I actually beat this time trial before completing the 200cc Grand Prix including it, because I kept losing over and over again mainly due to me blundering it in the Mushroom Cave. Going through it without the chaos of 11 other racers made me realize I needed to not trick off the ramp leading to the tall mushrooms, which helped me reach the blue toadstool safely without leaping past it into the pit. There's also a shortcut I learned about from the ghosts towards the beginning, but it wasn't as as impressive as the field of grass at the end. The me sure have been pulling their weight, and they assured Sky High Sunday wasn't going to be a rocky road either. The ingredient to winning here was by drifting optimally around the rising staircase and the U-turn on the other side. While we watch my past self surmount this creamy land, I have good news. No more watching my ghosts race alone on the time trials after this. A year ago, for some reason, I recorded footage of Wave 3 when it first came out. Then my footage for Waves 4 through 6 after that aren't corrupted. So let's get back to normal. The Rock Cup begins with London Loop. And I've got to say, the city courses are all kind of blending together for me. You just drive by a bunch of buildings and mostly stay on the road. Then you get into lap three. The chain chomps have been let loose. And
and now terrorize the locals. London has fallen. Luigi must hate the British if he's celebrating like that. Now let's take a dive into Boo Lake, home of all the dead British people that got eaten by the chain chomps. My purple drifts were giving me a healthy lead and my jumps were on point. Then lightning struck, which was the beginning of a mess. As I emerged from the water, I slipped on a banana peel, losing my number one spot. A poorly timed bomb bomb exploded me further into sixth place. Mario Kart taketh, but it also giveth the good kind of fiascos. 100% skill, and don't you dare doubt it. Rock Rock Mountain. Is that second rock really necessary in the name? The actual Rock Mountain wasn't as rocky as I was expecting it to be. There was quite a bit of gliding. However, don't get too comfortable flying over the cloudy skies. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Coincidentally, at the end of the next lap, the same flyover that put me behind was the same one that leaped me ahead to first place. Maple Treeway, ah, looks like a great original track from the Wii days. Wait a minute, the DK Cannon? So much for original. As for me, I had my fair share of mistakes that put me in a less than desirable position. But I slowly made a comeback over time. It's too bad they don't hide anything in those piles of leaves. Or so I thought. Surprise, motherfucker. That's first place for all the Rock Cup, followed by my success in Mirror Mode and 200cc. Let's check out the Moon Cup, starting with Berlin Byways, which is feeling samey to the London Loop. Don't get me wrong, I ended up enjoying every single racetrack. I just noticed a lot of similarities while going over this footage. I'm not always the most intelligent either. Like, I should not have been hit by that blue shell. I had the super horn for crying out loud. I won anyway. The second track is Peach Gardens. A little self-conceited there, princess. Mario's got one too? Man, you all are a bunch of self-absorbed... Uh, <gasps> what is that beauty? Well, what is it you want? We want a shrubbery! My ego was getting to me. I didn't pay attention to the arrows that the last lap would go in reverse. Good thing I had a huge lead. And now I get to see my shrubbery in its fullest glory. So handsome. You must find another shrubbery! Uh Just in time for the holidays, Merry Mountain is here. Along with some bullcrap Christmas magic. I am invincible! Where's Iggy going? <gasps> You can drive on the railroad tracks. This must be the fastest way around the course. No matter how different a Koopaling may appear, he will always be welcome with holiday ch- oh, crap, I messed it up. And again on the third lap. Whatever, just give me that W. This is the fourth Rainbow Road Mario Kart 8 now has in its collection of tracks. And since I've never played Mario Kart 7, this will be my first time experiencing it. It's definitely unique from the rest of them, especially with much of the road not being connected. And I'm always a fan when the creators make every lap different rather than the same loop three times. These item blocks look like they were placed to be fall baked. It's a trap! Are you freaking kidding me? Daisy evaded all of those fireballs? I am invincible. Second place? That's gonna be a loss. I still get the trophy, but only earned two stars, so... Here we go again! Move aside, Daisy. I'm taking home the win this time. Three stars means perfect score, so we're done here, along with Mirror Mode and 200cc shortly after. I actually completed the Moon and Rock time trials a year ago, and if you can even believe it, I was even more of a casual player back then then. At the time, I came to the conclusion that I needed to change something. My setup, though it was fly, had crappy stats. It was time to shift over to my online main, Morton, and a Weenie Hut Jr. ride. <laughs> so long, plumber boy. Ugh, okay, what do I need to do, Google? Oh no, I've never felt so humiliated in my entire life. Is this what I've become? One of those Patriot bandwagon fans? I'm someone with no originality. I'm, I'm winning? Okay, okay, it didn't happen that fast. It took about 18 more minutes of practice to finally beat Frank, the Mario who works at Nintendo. Now for 200cc, Alice. Yeah, I just highlighted a 150cc ghost because some of the DLC pose a challenge unlike the base game. But ugh, the 200 ghost is even faster. I'm gonna do this one later. I think the London Loop staff ghosts are just on another level compared to the rest of the cup because I beat Boo Lake on my first try. Of course, I didn't win every track on my first try because I'm still learning these courses. Like thanks to the ghost, I now know about this little boost you can get from the pipe. 
These ones too. 28 minutes later and I barely got the victory as I floated past the finish line. Maple Treeway shouldn't be too bad. Wait a second. Where'd Daisy come from? Well, apparently there's this shortcut right at the beginning of the track. Once I figured that out and noticed the ghost doesn't drift correctly around the turn with the ramp, it was an easy win after only five minutes. The rest of the 150 time trials for the moon and rock cups were a breeze. I'm just still surprised I needed to cover some of them. I then switched to Baby Daisy to conquer both cups unfinished 200 time trials. Turns out there's a shortcut on the left of Boo Lake I hadn't noticed until now. Getting the timing down for this shortcut was the key to winning this one, especially since the ghost doesn't take it during the first lap. Failure after failure after failure! In about 20 minutes of practice, I nailed the shortcut on every lap which led to success. I skipped Rock Rock Mountain because I just didn't understand how I was losing so badly. I didn't understand why I was losing on Maple Treeway either. Even though I took that turn better than them, they'd eventually creep back up to me. You know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them. When I see them using a heavy character, I sometimes do the same. After swerving around that gnarly turn again, I actually kept my spot as number one. Back to baby mode in Berlin. With only me being the sole driver, the chaoticness of 200cc isn't felt as much like it did in Grand Prix mode. However, this tree yard was the bane of my existence. I figured saving my mushrooms for it would be best, but they weren't like get out of jail free cards. Being prepared for the drift there took lots of practice. Practice. Thankfully, this part only appeared during the second and third laps. And whenever I did get it right, my lead would increase. My mental Berlin wall had been torn down. Peach Gardens doesn't have much new to cover. Just took around 18 minutes of practice. And Mary Mountain went even faster. The staffer doesn't take advantage of cutting this corner. They stupidly go up the ramp. Rainbow Road was a peculiar one compared to most. Because there was no shortcut to use your mushrooms for. So I just triggered them during the dole parts. Also, the ghost would take the bottom road after this jump instead of the aerial route, which I'm pretty sure is the faster way as long as you make it through all of the rings. I'll take this last small victory though, because London still awaited me. Man, I hated this so much. I spent almost two hours on this level alone. Guys and gals, I'm getting anxiety just from watching over this footage and the pain. Oh, there was real pain. My index finger was screaming for a break, but I couldn't just give up. If you want to know what hell Alice from Nintendo will bring into your life, give this one a whirl. Unless you're some kind of pro or something, I don't know. So instead of reliving those horrible memories that I wish I could erase from my brain, let me just show you how I beat it and keep in mind that this took countless attempts. The first must is to start building a drift boost before crossing the yard with the chain chomp. That way, you only use one mushroom and the turbo boost to make it across without losing time. Then when you get to the second chain chomp, you're gonna go for one of those coveted purple ultra turbo boosts. Not done yet. Jump up the stairs during another drift. When you get back to that second chain chomp, use a mushroom to cut through the grass and go for the purple again. These moments weren't the only things that contributed to the win here. Execution needs to be near perfect when gathering coins and going around turns. And if you're lucky enough, you'll win by only seven hundredths of a second. I seriously hated every second talking about the 200 London Loop time trial from Moon Cup. I still needed to beat one on the Rock Cup though. Rock Rock Mountain. This one only took an hour and was far less stressful. Losing still sucks, but at least I could see my opponent the entire race, which gave a much less heavy mental burden to overcome. Since I wasn't far behind the Nintendo employee, I copied his cart setup figuring if Juliet can do it with that, so can I. There are three key moments I felt impacted the race atop the mountain. First was making it through the cave efficiently without crashing. Second was flying off this ramp, then timing the mushroom boosted drift just right. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Third, I had no idea how to improve, was the final gliding segment. Somehow the ghost always flew faster than me and this is where they would always catch up. Not knowing how to fix that problem, I had to make sure the other key moments went perfectly. Even the tiniest mistake would be detrimental. Eventually, the run I needed came along. My inputs were finally consistent and paying off. It was still down to the wire as I was neck and neck with Juliet. She pulled ahead during the last lap and I wasn't about to give up. With a time just three hundredths of a second in front of Juliet's, it was over and it was on to the Fruit Cup, opening with Amsterdam Drift. 
Initially, I was going to write this off as a typical samey looking city course, but then I saw the windmills, dove underwater for the second lap, and took the time to smell the flowers during the third. I was pleasantly surprised. Ah, Riverside Park. That title for some reason sparked a memory of when I was in high school. There was this kid that whenever you said the word Riverside to him, he'd raise his hand with the I love you sign, then scream, RIVERSIDE! That's it. Oh, you want to hear about the track? Too bad. DK Summit is next. Let's blast off from the DK Cannon to the top. I don't know what it is about these downhill courses that makes me such a sucker for them. I just really like the thrilling view when racing downhill. It is too bad that doing gnarly tricks on the half pipe like Sean White probably isn't the most efficient way to stay ahead. Whatever. I'll party the first two laps, then play it seriously on the third, drifting tightly around that last corner. The best thing about the Fruit Cup is it introduces the very first brand new level in all of the DLC. Yoshi's Island based off of, well... Yoshi's Island. Yeah, I know Sky High Sunday was technically the first, but come on. We all know that was designed to be for the mobile game Mario Kart Tour. Yoshi's Island is richly filled with references and is overall a great course. Be sure to say hi to Poochie. Watch out for Shy Guys on stilts. Wave to the Nep Enut. That's the blue monster in the distance. And then do your best to catch the winged cloud midair, which will summon a red bridge that cuts over the terrain, surely bringing one to victory. In mere mode, Birdo was going to ruin my three-star win. I saw her green shell, so I got as far to the side of her as I could, then blasted her with the red shell. 200cc went swell as well, so I guess I'll cover Riverside Park a little for the five of those who were bummed I didn't. I just really don't like walking nude piranha plants. Their appearances in other games too make me violated just by looking at them. Let's get into the time trials now. It took just one attempt in 150 Amsterdam to realize I needed to use Monty Mole's holes to pull ahead of the Staff Ghost. 200cc, on the other hand, was a nightmare. Make one mistake and there was no way of coming back. The most annoying obstacle was shortly after I'd entered the canal, there would be a current of water that jumps me up to the ferry. But as you can see in slow motion here, it sometimes knocked me off to the side. At other times, it wouldn't. Anyways, on lap one, I figured out hopping over the first mold, then mushrooming over the grass was the way to go. Actually, no. What a waste of a mushroom. Room. I'll still bounce over the first pit, then save my boost for later. Amsterdam's 200 ghost, however, was amongst the ones that took the longest to beat. Narrow paths took multiple attempts to know when to drift. Heck, they didn't have to be narrow. There were just a lot of turns to account for. There was no special secret to success in Amsterdam. It was the simple adage of practice makes perfect that got me familiar enough with the course. In order to win after a total of 40 minutes, Riverside Park's ghosts were completely the opposite in terms of difficulty. The 150 Nintendo staff member was better than their 200 counterpart. It was still very doable once I got the shortcut down every lap, but the ghost was always breathing down my neck. I miss 150cc being easy. The only thing to mention about the faster trial was I found it more effective to skip across the grass at the beginning because the higher class engine was already going around the mud puddle fast enough. You can see I didn't even do it that good here, yet I still won. Now that every DLC character and me costume has gotten a turn in the spotlight, I was going full Diddy Kong from here on out, fittingly going to DK Summit next. Like last time, the 150 Ghost put up more of a challenge here than the next one I was about to face. The midway point of the half pipe at the bottom was where I needed to execute my trick in order to win the race. Same thing with 200cc. Mushroom through the first plow of snow, and you don't even have to navigate perfectly at the bottom. No hair off my monkey chest for this one. For Yoshi's Island 150, I only needed to tap the winged cloud once to summon the bridge. 200cc though, I had to fly through that floating water vapor every single lap to ensure victory. The Nintendo employee wasn't troublesome. They just got it every time, so I had to make sure I did as well. Overall, easy stuff. Coming back like the Boomerang Cup is a Grand Prix mode starring the city of... Bangkok? What did he say? <laughs> Who did what with their what here? I'm gonna get demonetized if I say that again. It's a good thing the developers made this city a cool track. Otherwise, I'd be making fun of the name the whole time. On the third lap, I got blue shelled pretty hard. Thankfully, though, the bouncy canopies kept me going. Hope the people under them are okay. Quiet! Keep it down up here! Another Mario circuit? Really? Who is making these decisions at Nintendo? Oh, you think it's different? 
different enough because you included a forest section? I give it a bland out of 10. What we need are more retro courses like Waluigi Stadium from the GameCube era. In the Double Dash entry of the series, characters were given their own unique items. For instance, Diddy Kong could obtain a giant banana that would split into three nanners. And you know what? It sure felt like I was playing Diddy in Double Dash. Because look at me go stopping three red shells one after another with my trio of fruit. In mirror mode, I made sure to check out the upper metal staging. There wasn't much to see up there. I was surprised to see that the Boomerang Cup had not one, but two city levels in its Grand Prix. At first, I was hesitant about the decision to put two in a single cup, but Singapore Speedway was definitely distinct in its own right. You get a feel of its cultural vibes blazing through the outdoor market, flying above their waters toward their high-class buildings, drifting along the speedways, and so much more. Back in Bangkok... <laughs> To complete the mirror class of this cup, I of course always do my best to win everything the first time, but I do like to experience every path I can to get the most out of the game, even when they slow me down like I did just here. But I always find a way to come back! Except in the 200cc class. During the final race in Singapore, I made the fatal mistake of crashing right near the end where it mattered most and got passed by Wendy of all people. Freaking Wendy! I didn't even get a chance at revenge because she didn't enter the next time where I beat the whole thing. Back in Bangkok again. Language! For the time trials this visit, I noticed something while going over my races with the staff ghosts that applied to most of the Boomerang Cup and to some other courses outside of it. The key to success was to not ram into anything and take the optimal path. Now, of course, that's easier said than done, especially in a city like Bangkok. Stop saying that! Where you feel crammed driving at top speeds with all of the narrow paths and turns. I'm gonna give the Mr. Scooty bike most of the credit here for assisting me in barely not scraping these walls, allowing me to win within 10 minutes most of the time. Mario Kart Circuit is one of those anomalies where the 150 Ghost is the more difficult one. Actually, I realize they're becoming less of an anomaly in the DLC. Anywho, here I feel like I have to execute every drift and shortcut just right. Otherwise, I'll get passed. So like always, practice, practice, practice. And thankfully, this practice, practice, practice took only around 10 minutes. 200cc ghost, what are you even doing? Beat them on my first attempt. Waluigi's 150 wasn't as tense as the previous 150 time trial. It was all about finding the right path. Still took a few tries to find out what worked best for me, but man, I am starting to realize how freaking long this track is. It just keeps going and going and going and going. Wake up! We're there! 200cc, the Nintendo staff wasn't as hard, so long as I prioritized drifting instead of the jumps. And don't worry about messing up. They lollygag in the half pipe while you can go straight past them. You know we take those. Best of all, both of the Singapore time trials were a piece of cake. No advice here other than the obvious avoid ramming into structures. Much wider roads here compared to Bangkok. Seriously, stop it. Come on, lighten up for the Feather Cup. We're entering Athens. We are the muses. We'll begin and end this race at the Goddesses Parthenon. Each lap I'm treated with a different angle of the theater of Dionysus. And overall, the vintage look of this city makes me feel like I'm more in the past rather than the present. By the way, the half pipe jumps were cool, but do they have to be in every level now? Lap two, I descend down upon the theater, then continue through the ancient worn down land. Since I was in first place the whole duration, I'll have to experiment with the shortcuts in the time trials. Ooh, the Daisy Cruiser. I wonder if Daisy is on board. I am Daisy! 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 Looks like the ship has a leak that led in a Ma Ray eel. So I depart the vessel to take the Moonview Highway home. And I'm gonna say it. This looks like another Toad Turnpike. Unlike Shroom Ridge, this one takes place at night with a plethora of boost pads and has a toll gate. Look at that Yoshi employee. He ain't stopping me at this breakneck speed because he only gets paid minimum wage. Putting up with a racer like me is above your pay grade. In fact, I keep up the explosive behavior by purposely igniting this bomb in order to avoid the blue shell's wrath. Anything for the W. The Feather Cup introduces a very welcomed brand new course, that being the squeaky clean sprint. It's unknown if we, the players, have been shrunk or if the bathroom itself is gigantic. It's a me, Rubber Duck. 
lucky. We started on the countertop, dived into the bathtub, went down the drain. Oh, there's my wife's wedding ring. And like the lazy husband I am, I left it there. The kids must have been here too because soap is all over the floor and it is slippery. I fell behind on the third lap, but thanks to the geyser from the toilet, I was able to take the faster alternate route to victory. During mirror mode, I realized that there was a fan blowing at us, dispelling what I thought was slippery tile. Then in 200cc, I barely clenched the win from Ludwig, beating every class on my first try for the Feather Cup. In the Athens Dash 150 time trial, I finally got to use the shortcut I never had the chance to in the Grand Prix. The 200 Ghost is going to take the spotlight for this city, though, per them being more difficult. But really, I just had to nail down the methods of the track drifting into the theater before I could even see it, and saving a mushroom, because tricking off every jump could put you in a bind. But you do need every boost you can get in order to secure that win. Both of the Daisy Cruise time trials were simple to beat. There were no apropos places to execute the dash mushroom. Just had to play and drift well throughout the course. Moonview Highway was the Feather Cup's true test of skill for both 150 and 200 cc. Starting with 150, it wasn't a struggle to race around the incoming traffic. However, you from Nintendo playing as Waluigi was just straight up faster than me. I had no choice but to take the advice of the comments section from the last video highlighting the base game. I needed to nab 10 coins to reach top speed, so I did just that and uh, uh, I'm still losing. I even followed them throughout the track, and dare I say, I did better than them. I was just too slow. After 20 minutes of failure, I needed a change in weight class. Funky Kong. And I kid you not, simply by switching to the Funkster, I won on my very next attempt. I should have never ignored his Mario Kart Wii dominance. What did that bring you? Back to me. Unfortunately, Sophia represented the 200 Ghost, playing as the first member of the DK crew, and kicked my butt for 50 minutes. I not only needed to prioritize coins because Sophia was no pushover, I had to watch out for the many hazards as well, which ramped up in difficulty because of the 200cc engine. Holy crap, it felt impossible! Keeping up with Sophia Sophia was tough enough, and now I have to know the placement of every vehicle on the road at any given time? Felt like I had to be frame perfect going between obstacles. Sometimes even that wasn't enough. Well, like I mentioned earlier, after 50 minutes, I finally would do it. I believe this part of the lap was what cut the gap. While Sophia may have always pulled ahead, I was cutting the corners of these turns before the bridge much more efficiently. I couldn't believe it. I was swerving over every boost pad while building up my own with the drifts, somehow not colliding with any cars. I definitely earned it after nearly an hour of practice, and I'm happy to report I got a nice break with the squeaky clean sprint. Hanging on to the left while drifting through the soapy section would give me such an advantage. That winning took only a matter of minutes. On to the cherry cup. We're gonna chill on the West Coast throughout these Grand Prix beginning in Los Angeles oil pump jacks. I get that Inglewood oil field is one of the biggest in the country, but it is not what comes to mind when thinking about LA. It's the beach and Santa Monica Pier people want to see. But there is another glaring inaccuracy. Where are the homeless people? Where are the tents? I've been to LA. I know they're there. Nothing beats California weather though. And there's fun stuff like the Dodgers baseball stadium. Then for whatever reason, we detoured to the desert called Sunset Wilds. There is nothing interesting to see here at all. Except dancing shy guys with pickaxes and shovels. Koopa Cape is more like it with all of the water. It does seem to be inspired by Big Blue. Well, actually it's the other way around, since this came out on Wii first. All I can think about is the dreadful time trials with all the different routes. For now, I'll take my mind off it by heading up the west coast into Vancouver Velocity, eh? These later track designs really have had great glow-ups, eh? At first I was always complaining how the cities looked samey, a. However, the ones released in the second half of the DLC really stand out, A. Eh? Although it is a crime, there is no hockey here, A. Eh? That finishes our tour of Cherry's 150 Cup, and then mirrors shortly after. The only notable different technique I used in 200 was during Koopa Cape. I used the half pipe to maintain control since the ending turn was tight. Having beaten all classes first try, it was on to the time trials. Both of Los Angeles Laps ghosts weren't too bad because they would both have moments of taking the lead. Use shortcuts I didn't even know about, and yet I'd still pass them that very same attempt. 
Sunset Wilds went about the same, all because the 200 Ghosts didn't use the superior shortcut with their mushrooms. First half of Cherry Cup down, but the second half was a bigger pill to swallow. Not really with Koopa Cape's 150 Ghosts, but rather their 200 counterpart. And just like I thought during the Grand Prix, the different paths had to be experimented. It was more how to handle the paths ahead. As you can see here with Frank from Nintendo ignoring the ramps, choosing to swerve past them instead. Over time, I learned he was right, and was inspired by his bravery to face the Goombas without fear. Drifting to cut most of the upcoming corner was something he didn't do though. Turns out, drifting was a key component to navigating the water stream correctly, executing the shortcut just right, then starting back up another drift while entering the underwater pipe, then again with the next turn instead of tricking off of jumps, then remembering to do it again when exiting the tunnel in order to cut straight to the finish line the best I could. The last lap I accidentally went for the trick, forcing my hand to use the half pipe, but thankfully had built enough of a lead to still win. In. in Vancouver's 150, I was experiencing the same dilemma I had back when I was playing as Diddy in Moonview Highway's 150. I was just too slow and always behind even though I was copying the ghost's every move. I got lazy and just decided to look up a tier list that showed me the best build. Shout out to UNLV Bear for the tier list. But man, Cat Cruiser is such a dumb looking car. I mean, it all worked out in the end and it was nice to overcome this hurdle with such a simple switch of a character and cart. I just wish my beloved Blue Falcon had the same capabilities. However, not even the busted setup of this build could save me from the terror juiced from Nintendo would inflict upon me for the next hour. The Cat Cruiser wasn't even keeping up in speed. I've already been stuck here with juiced for 15 minutes, and I needed a better drifting machine to nab coins more consistently, so it was back to Funky Kong on Mr. Scooty. I still wasn't perfect at grabbing every coin, but I sure felt a lot more in control and was more consistent during attempts overall. The footage I'm showing you right now is my winning attempt. I have no shame in admitting I spent another 50 minutes against the Vancouver Velocity 200cc ghost. However, it was too painful and repetitive to watch. I think you get the idea with me telling you the draft slash jump trick off that ramp it was hard to pull off to make these turns as tight as possible. And then this dash mushroom across the grass would veer me off to the right most of the time. I couldn't enjoy the ice show because I had to be in drifting position before even touching the stairs in preparation for the upcoming swerves and turns, which I still messed up causing me to panic using one of my mushrooms. It was okay though, because once I entered the third lap while in first place, the rest of the track was smooth sailing in my eyes. I couldn't believe that I somehow maintained that lead after using one of my mushrooms to nullify a mistake. <sighs> Time for a break with the Acorn Cup Grand Prix starting with Rome Avanti. It begins with its signature Coliseum landmark spiraling us up to the top to then plurge us into the city. I'm gonna say it, this one looks more like a typical city course. Let me be clear though, I'm not complaining. After being stuck in a level for over an hour, it's a treat to see something new. Going through the Coliseum again is great too. But DK Mountain, oh ho, DK Mountain. This track is awesome. Like DK Summit, a humongous cannon launches you to the peak. And just by the look of the volcano's face, you know you're in for a wild ride down. It may be like Mount Wario and DK Summit. However, DK Mountain did it all first on the GameCube. I just love the feeling of racing downhill and sliding from one side to the other during the switchbacks. Although I do miss the characters in Double Dash having to hold on to dear life when being launched from the cannon. The third course of the Acorn Cup is Daisy Circuit, where I coincidentally draft behind Daisy. We're then treated to the adorable statue statue of Luigi and Daisy being together, but whenever a track has the word circuit in it, it's almost bound to be a basic one. So other than the cute baby Luigi and Daisy, I got nothing else to say here. The last course of the Acorn Cup is Piranha Plant Cove. <laughs> Just ignore him, Funky. He's a wannabe. Anywho, this is a pretty standard cove. Filled with piranha plants on land and a few PD piranha statues underwater. It's a charming course and the laps differ from each other, but all the aesthetics blend together in my eyes after a while. It ends up being one of the more forgettable cups in my opinion. Nevertheless, I attain those perfect scores. Then move on to the time trials. I am very pleased to share that all four tracks in this cup had relatively easy ghosts to beat. The main thing in Rome was nailing the shortcuts without losing momentum. Him. Once I got both of them right in the same run, 150 and 200 were beaten. Both of the staff at DK Mountain were pushovers as well, and if you really want to assert dominance over them, you could jump over the gap as shown in this clip. Daisy Circuit I thought I was going to breeze through on my first try, but then... 
Nani? I didn't realize there was a hidden shortcut right here this whole time. That's all I needed to win on my second attempt in both classes. Something similar happened in Piranha Cove as well. I thought I was doing just fine when all of a sudden... You never see it come back. During the next go-around, I kept my eyes peeled for the shortcut's entrance, but missed it again. However, I did not give up this time. Then for once in my life, I just flat out passed PD Piranha with my raw speed. Should have gathered 10 coins, you Audi belly button bum. Now that was only 150cc, so I still got 200 left. That hole in the ship must be the shortcut. Well, fortunately for me, I had a healthy lead, finally found the shortcut, and still ended up winning. Acorn Cup, you were chill. Spiny Cup, please don't go too hard on me. Thankfully, Madrid Drive doesn't look at all too threatening. Actually, there are a couple Vespa here. Could Urkeli from Luca be here for the Potoroso Cup? If not, we can always watch Goombas wearing footwear playing soccer. Up next is Rosalina's Ice World. How did she make this place? Let it go! No, Rosalina, no. You think I want Disney copyright claiming this video? Um, Andrew? Huh? What is it, Funky? I'm on the edge of my seat. Well, then get out of there, my man. Later on the first lap, I speed off a ramp to land on some floating ice. However, on lap number two, some of the ice is broken off, cutting my leap short into the water. It's a good thing Funky Kong learned how to hold his breath for infinite amounts of time during those underwater levels in Tropical Freeze. The penultimate stage in all of the DLC is Bowser's Castle 3 from the SNES. Now, I know a lot of people like to give the original Super Mario Kart a lot of flack for being dated, but you can't deny the beautiful upgrade Bowser's Castle 3 got. The flat textures have now sprung to life like a pop-up book, and even the dry piranha plants are here. However, the grand finale of the DLC is a course I've never tried before. The Wii's version of Rainbow Road. Everyone online seems to gush about this track like it's the second coming of Rainbow Roads. Is it really the best out of all five of the Rainbow Roads that are now in the game? Having played it for myself after all these years hearing the clamor about it, it is pretty spectacular. Although picking my favorite Rainbow Road is like picking who my favorite child is. That being said, this might be it. Only time will tell, though. After being hit by an item and with no mushroom to speed me back up, I was able to hop across Rainbow Road. That is so rad. By the way, I love the falling animation, how it's like a meteor into Earth. In 200cc, I was able to jump across even more of Rainbow Road. Truly a magical stage and a great send-off to finishing the Grand Prix. All DLC cups and classes have been won with perfect scores, earning me a thank you from the makers of the game. No, thank you Nintendo for the wonderful experience. But it's not over yet. The Spiny Cup's time trial still remain to 100%. Madrid Drive's ghosts both only took a few tries to beat. Don't be afraid to cut the corner with the sleeping wiggler, time the shortcuts just right with the mushrooms, mostly over grassy terrain, and before you know it, there's only three courses left. Rosalina's Ice Cave 150 Ghost I kept losing to because I simply had a slower build than the Nintendo staff member. Thus, I switched to the fastest coupling of the litter, Morty. And it worked! I stayed ahead the whole time! I also learned from trial and error that going up the half pipe for a small boost was necessary to make the landing onto the ice, since during laps 2 and 3, more of it fell apart. Going above was faster than diving underneath. For 200cc, it was back to the funkiest Kong on Mr. Scooty. Why? Well, because every turn felt so tight at this speed. If not done right, taking the half pipe could slow you down. And watch out for all the cracks in the ice. I definitely messed up here a number of times. From then on, beginning the drift early was crucial in order to ride along the boost pads without falling off. And to refrain from veering off to the right when taking the shortcut at the end of each lap. Eventually, I found the right spot to surge above the half pipe, didn't risk drifting on the ice, and did even better on the last lap driving over all three boosts and nailing the ending resulting in my victory. Bowser's Castle 3 time trials were the easiest to conquer. I was so used to sliding and drifting past way more structures than this. I ignited my mushroom here since I didn't know where else to. And after very few tries, all that remained was one track. Rainbow Road Wii. Initially, I was sure I was going to best the 150 Ghost on my first attempt. Naturally, I was just ahead. Until this happened. Restart. Not gonna make that mistake again. Better safe than sorry as long as I get the trick boost. Now this should be a piece of cake. 
Well, actually it took three attempts because I had no idea where to execute my mushrooms each lap. I decided on the third try to use them at the end, which bid me well having now completed every 150cc time trial, which left only the final boss on 200cc left to triumph. Luigi, played by Yuya. Thankfully, they weren't the hardest of all the ghosts, but they were one of the more difficult ones. Like, how did they pull ahead of me just now? Apparently, you can drift into the halfpipe's blue ramp to shave a second or two. However, this did not go as planned every time. Even when it did, though, Yuya would still take the lead, so I must have not been performing it as effectively as them. So I needed another way to cut my time down. I tried different methods, such as hopping across rainbow roads, then landing into an immediate drift. However... I wasn't consistent in pulling it off every time. I'm not sure how much it mattered though, because in the end, it didn't even matter. I was still losing. I kept at it, thinking it was the only way, until I accidentally stumbled upon a miracle. <laughs> That is out of this world! I can start the drift before the jump! Believe it or not, that was all I needed to finally complete this blasted DLC. This cut across not only skipped a segment, it was also a smoother transition into a mini turbo boost up into the star cannon. I just needed to not screw up. Yes! Let's freaking go! That was it! That was the secret sauce and luck I needed to pull off every lap. I gladly activate my last mushroom on the final stretch, beating Yuya, capping off the 200cc time trials. And that's how I 100%ed Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's DLC. If you made it this far, why not support the video by liking it and subscribing to the channel? Then there's my Instagram for more personal supplementary content. You all have a good one. Thanks!